Congrats to Alcaraz for winning Wimbledon. He's such a pleasure to watch play. And the big X factor that I want to get into today is one of my big reasons why I enjoy watching him so much. And the good news is this is something that all of us can copy and emulate to have better results on the court. This has nothing to do with talent or athleticism or timing or muscles or strength or explosiveness or anything like that. And it, by the way, just side note, he has lots of X factors, right? Like athletically in terms of his talent and skill and ability, his attitude, his outlook towards the game, his humility, his coachability. This is, this is one of them. And as I'm just watch, I'm playing this montage back here on the screen. These are all points where, and obviously this is not Wimbledon, look at the hustle that Alcaraz routinely shows when he's kind of down and out in the point where it looks like his opponent is probably in total control, has a stranglehold on what's going on. And Alcaraz uses his hustle and just grit and determination so well, so frequently. And this is something that we can all copy and emulate. I'm gonna break down a, a particular point here. And I wanna reveal some things that we can all do. And in this point against Zverev, he coughs up a short, weak sitter. And I want you to look at the timing here. When Alcaraz starts to make his move, and by the way, just the fact that he's making a move at all, he could just stand there and concede the point and say, well, I hit a weak shot, you have an easy shot, this point's probably over. And a lot of professional players just kind of throw in the towel at this point. Not all of them. Some of them, you know, kind of have this X factor of like hustle and anticipation and just like, just making the decision, I'm not going to stop running until the ball bounces for the second time. And Alcaraz has that in spades. And I want you to notice the timing here. He's choosing to make a guess and make a move well before the ball gets hit. And what does that mean? It means he could be wrong. Zverev could easily go in either direction here. And so this is kind of lesson number one, is, is you have to be willing to just take a stab at it and just pick a direction when you read that the situation is super dire and it's like, wow, they could beat me either way. If I just stand here, I'm just going to lose anyway. So I might as well just pick a direction. And this is rarely done by normal everyday tennis players where somebody just recognizes the situation, how far behind they are, and just runs. So the reality is there's a lot of real estate here to cover, right? For a singles player, it's 1,400 square feet just your side of uh, the court, just the part that you have to cover is 1,400 square feet. So at this level, with the amount of weaponry that Alexander has, he could easily hit a winner anywhere. And Carlos is just picking a direction and he might be wrong, but he's just giving it his best shot. And over time, you can start to gain some data from your opponent and start to maybe guess like 60% correct. And maybe 40% of the time they go the other direction, they mix it up. But if you, can, if you can just gain a slight statistical advantage, this is not about being right every time. It's simply about being right a small percentage of the time. And then when you are right, like watch this, watch how this plays out. So he happens to be right here and he started running before the ball got hit and puts himself in perfect position to just block back a ball. And this is key, whether he wins the points or not, please hear me loud and clear. Whether Carlos wins this point or not at this point is irrelevant. Well, not quite irrelevant. Like, of course, it, it would be nice. Of course, when he guesses right, it would be great if he just magically won every point. But that's not real life. You're going to still lose some of them. He's still behind in the points, and Zverev still has, like, the upper hand here. But just the fact that he went is going to pay dividends down the road. Because Zverev is saying to himself, holy crap, look at the hustle this guy has. He's willing to just go all out and just pick a corner and go for it. What do I have to do in order to get a ball past this guy? Like sometimes he's gonna guess right. I need to try to hit that much better of a shot, which stacks pressure. It adds a little bit of extra stress to the situation because he can't take anything for granted at that point. He, he's gonna recognize that athletically, like pretty intuitively. So that's like big takeaway number one is we're adding stress, we're adding pressure. We're, forcing, in this instance, forcing our opponent to hit one more shot, which is hugely valuable tactically in tennis. And not only is he forcing him to hit another shot, but he manages to give him not an easy one. He's hitting a volley from below the height of the net, a backhand volley, and trying to have to hit this like soft touch shot. And by the way, 
in the meantime, what is Carlos doing? He's running again. <laughs> so he's like layering the pressure shot after shot. And Carlos is saying, okay, you probably should have already won the point. You didn't. Now you should probably again win this point. It's not over yet because I'm just going to run and sprint and go, and go as hard as I can. Now, at this point, he does lose the point. But what has he accomplished? He's put a seed of doubt in his opponent's mind the next time that his opponent has the upper hand in a point. He's already starting to think because this is how these elite players think. They're constantly trying to think one step ahead. They're playing chess. They're, they're not playing checkers. And so if Carlos consistently guesses correctly, it's going to eventually get in the head of his opponent. Then his opponent's going to have to try to make those shots better if he wants to just win the point outright. So he's going to aim closer to the line. He's going to hit it a little bit harder. He's going to hit a little bit lower over the net to try to get the ball through the court a little bit faster. And even then, Carlos is saying, I still might get to the ball anyway, and you might have to hit another shot and another shot and another shot. And listen, over the span of an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, this pays huge dividends. And if occasionally you can kind of steal a point from your opponent because you guessed early, you just ran, you went as hard as you could, you forced them to hit another shot, and even if one or two out of ten times you end up kind of pulling the point away from your opponent and wrestling it away from them, psychologically that can be massive over the span of an hour or two of competitive battle back and forth. So this is, a, in my view, a lot of professional players do this, but I think Carlos puts, in a, puts a special amount of attention and effort and just willingness to just try it and just go hard for every single ball. We can copy that at whatever level you are. It will pay dividends. It will help, help you win more points. It will help you beat more players. So just make a commitment to yourself. Next time you go out there, just commit to yourself. I won't stop running until the ball lands out, until the ball bounces for the second time, until the point is really, truly, truly dead. I will not concede anything. You'll get some more balls, you put more pressure on your opponent, and you'll be more successful as a tennis player. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to you again next time.